Welcome to Barger Woodworking. I got an order for a sign that is 41 inches by 25 inches. My CNC machine will only cut 25 by 25. So rather than turn the order down, I am using tiling, a feature of VCarve desktop, in order to make a sign larger than my CNC bed. Literally, I could make a 10 foot long uh, sign as long as it was within the 25 inches of the, the width of the bed and you had enough clearance on both sides to, to feed the thing through and support it. So I'm going to show you how I did this. Uh, I'll quickly go through how I prepared the boards and then give you an idea of what I sold it for and uh, the final product. Stick with me. I bought these boards about three months ago from the local lumber yard and they were quite wet and had to dry in order to be able to use them and paint them. So at this point they were around 12 to 13 percent moisture content which is workable. Here I set up uh, stops on my chop saw in order to cut them all at the same length. Uh, this was one of the easiest ways to make sure all your boards are the same. You also notice I used the material clamp and tightened it down to hold the board flat and to keep the board from bucking up if I cut too deep too quickly. You'll notice I make shallow passes with the chop saw. I've learned from experience if there's any kind of warp in the board and you cut too deep too fast, your whole saw is going to kick right back up at you. Now, I haven't hurt myself, but you never know. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please click the subscribe button. It really helps me out. Thanks. Okay, once you get all the pieces cut, I took them over to the uh, joiner, made sure it was nice and square because it does go out. And you notice I pushed the, the protective slide over to check it because sometimes I don't hear it running and the last thing I want to do is get my hands near there while the thing's on. Here I'm joining the edges to get them nice and flat. It usually takes a couple passes to do that. You want to look down and sight them to make sure that your uh, machine didn't get whacked out of uh, straight and run it a couple times, get it good and then move on. Okay, next thing you want to do is flatten your boards. Now you'll notice later in the video I had an issue with these boards not being flat, but in retrospect I should have flattened them here, glued them up, then put them on the CNC machine and flattened the whole thing before I painted them. But by the time I had them painted it was too late. Here I'm using a test board for the domino cutter to make sure I spaced the domino correctly on the face of the board so it cuts in the middle. Uh, I usually just cut one, make sure it's right where I want it, and then I'm good to go cutting the rest of the boards. When you're using a domino, you want to go slow. Uh, if you push too fast and you're in too much of a hurry, you'll get chip outs and some kickback with the machine. So take your time. One side I cut in the tight fitting so that they just fit right into the slot. And the second piece I cut it in a wider fitting, which is about an eighth of an inch on each side, which gives you a little playroom when you're gluing them together. Uh, the setting right here, this is the other side of the board, is the wider fitting. Well, actually, it's still on the small fitting, and I just remembered it and changed it to the wider fitting, which is on now. So I'm going to recut that hole and recut the first hole. No, I don't ever make mistakes. Anyway, I think the dominoes, they serve two purposes. One, the main purpose is 
it gives you equal spacing all along the board to make sure your, your top is perfectly level. The bottom sometimes isn't, but the top is. Here I'm gluing up. I use Tight Bond 3 glue. Uh, had a lot of success with it. Uh, supposedly the glue will break, the wood will break before the wood actually uh, breaks on the seam that you just made. So get it together, get it square, and clamp it up. I think I let, I normally let these dry overnight. I use a wet rag to wipe off the excess, although I'm going to be sanding and painting it, so it's not like when you're working with uh, finer furniture where you want uh, to stain it or put clear finish on. Here I'm ready to take the clamps off the next day and uh, get ready for some light sanding. I did have some little imperfections and cracks and stuff, so the easiest way since I'm painting it is just fill it with epoxy. This is my Festool vacuum. It's a HEPA vacuum and I love it. If you can afford one, your lungs are worth it, get it. It sucks all the dust, or I should say the majority. Anyway, I sanded the back. This is the back of the unit. Uh, found another couple areas that needed a little more epoxy. Uh, but you just lightly sanded. I wanted the back to be as flat as possible. And as you see later, it wasn't flat as possible. Uh, but I filled some holes with some more epoxy and sanded them flat. What I should have done at this point, after I trimmed it all to the right sizes, I should have put it in the CNC machine and flattened it. It probably would have taken maybe an eighth of an inch off the top. Lesson learned. Here I'm routing, routing the edges uh, with a chamfer bit. You always want to make sure you're going left to right on a with a router. Uh, you try to go the other way it's gonna fly right back at you. Now this is the next day I had spray painted the or rather I rolled the uh, the whole board with uh, black paint uh, semi-gloss and here I'm rolling the aura mask onto it. I was using a foam like ruler to push it on and the it broke. So I started using this linoleum roller and what a difference. It sticks 10 times better using this thing. So I strongly recommend if you're going to do this use a, use a linoleum roller like that uh, to attach it to the surface. Uh, you just put the oral mask on, roll it. Your surface has to be clean and level. And uh, it seems to work better with semi-gloss than flat paint. But roll it on real tight and then trim it off uh, with a uh, razor and a straight edge. Uh, because this is going to be, what you trim here is going to be the edge where in my case, green paint is going to come up to, which is the country club color green. Um, and it, when you paint the edges, you just paint it right up to this. Now, I'm not going to show you the painting. I've shown that in other videos. But here's where you, the way you lay it out on your CNC. I had to take the front uh, frame off my board that I used to get everything straight. And it was at this point that I realized my top was not flat. Oh, or my bottom, or both, who knows. But it was too late. I mean, I could have ripped off the aura mask, flattened it, and repainted the whole thing. But I thought I'd try something different, so I used these shims. It didn't come out perfect, but it came out perfect enough. 
Here I'm tightening up all the clamps and getting ready to go to the software and create okay. the program. First thing you do is create a new file. Now the bed of the Shapoko XXL that I have is 25 by 25. This sign needs to be 22, which will fit in the X axis, but I need it to be 41 inches long and I can only cut 25 inches. So, we use the tiling feature of uh, VCarve Desktop. So say OK. It warns you that you're going bigger than 25 by 25. Now you need to open up the tool pass, pin it so that it doesn't keep closing on you, and select Tile Toolpath. You're going to want to tile it, and you're going to want to feed it's telling you 25 bigger than 25 say okay you're going to feed it through the Y um, only doing it that way because that's the way my uh, machine is situated into a corner I can overhang it this way but I can't lay it the other way and go this way uh, depending on how your uh, Shapeoko or whatever CNC machine you're using you could possibly do it through the x-axis. It arbitrarily sets a height of 25 inches. I'm going to do an overlap of uh, a quarter inch, so 0.25. And that shows you the overlap right there, that little beige. Okay, so now I want to move this out of the way. So now you lay out your sign the way you want it. This one, and I'll blow through this quick, you want to, I want a rectangle that's an inch smaller than the 22 by 41, so it'll be 21 by 40. Create it. Close. And if you select it and select alignment tools, this center one here will center it perfectly. So close that. Close that. Now you need another rectangle that's a half inch smaller than this. So it'll be 20.5 by 39.5. Say create. Close. And if it didn't drop it, sometimes it'll drop it somewhere out here. Select a line, hit it to the center, and it'll be perfectly aligned. So there's your border. Close that. Now I already did all of the graphics here, so I'm just going to open up, save this, and call it whatever you want, test tile. And open up wherever you have the uh, the files that you need. And here they are. I'm just going to select them all. Hold down the shift key. It didn't catch that one. The fern. File. Edit. Copy. File. Close. File. Open test tile. It's warning you again. Say OK. Get this out of your way. Click somewhere over here and hit paste. And there's the whole thing. Now, if you hit center, it'll move it right into the center and it'll be perfect. Unfortunately, if you look close, right there is your break between the two tiles. It's going to cut right in the middle of that and right into the middle of the T. Now, if you set everything absolutely dead perfect, that will not be an issue. But I found through experience, it never works that way. So what I would recommend is grab, move the whole thing till it's just past the line. So you're only 
Here, this may be just a little bit more. There we go. So it's missing all my letters. Now, in the scheme of things, when you look at it, it's only going to be off a sixteenth of an inch, maybe, between the two sides. So it's nothing to worry about. But it'll make your job easier. So the only thing that has to line up when you actually cut it are these two edges. Now, the only other thing you need to add is a hole. You need to drill a hole that's going to be a circle and it's going to be exactly a quarter of an inch. So set this to a quarter of an inch. Say create and close it, select it, move selected option and you want to put this directly on the line. And let's say when I created it, let's say it wasn't directly on the line, it was up here somewhere. You want to drag it down till it is on the line. Now if you notice over here, it'll show you the XY. Well, we know the Y is 25, so you might as well just set that at 25. The X is how far in from the edge do you want it? And I want to make it at least 2 inches. So apply that, and it'll be dead on your line at 25 inches, which you know it is from down here. It says it's 25. And you know you're 2 inches in from the side. Close. You want to set a drill tool path. Your depth is an inch and a half, so you want to make it one five two tenths. That way it'll cut just a little bit into your sacrificial board underneath. I'm using a down cut. Always use a down cut when you're using a, uh, a mask on your pieces. Select it. And it's the 46202 down cut spiral quarter inch. Select, name it, drill a hole, and calculate. It's warning you it's going to cut through. Say, okay, I want it to. So there it is. Now go back. You need to select everything else. That's already locked. Hold your shift key, select the other one. Now they're all locked together. Hold the shift key, select that. Now everything's locked together. You want to click on group selected objects. Now they're all locked. Now you want to cut your tool path. In this case, I want to use V-Carve. And it's pre-selected the 60 degree half inch, which is what I use. Name it V-Carve Letters and Fern. Calculate. Preview all tool paths. And there's what it's going to look like there. And then select number two. Preview all tool paths. And there's the rest of it. Now notice my frame didn't show up. That's because I never did a toolpath for it. So let's select, hold the shift key, select the other one, lock them together. Now they're both locked. Do a toolpath. You might as well use that quarter inch that you already did. I want it to go down roughly an eighth of an inch. 2188 is uh, 730 seconds of an inch. That seems to be deep enough that if there's any fluctuation in the level of the thing, it'll cut down deep enough that you could, won't miss it. 
and call this pocket frame calculate preview all toolpaths select your toolpath one preview all toolpath and that's what it's going to look like now notice you got a hole right there that's your hole that you're going to use to line everything up and that's it close it save it select all your tool paths double check everything make sure your hole is right on the the line which it is save tool paths pick where you want to save it I want to save it on my uh, tile uh, sports complex and save close it out now you're ready to go cut it one of the keys to doing a tile is making sure you're set up perfectly on your left X and Y axis. Here I'm using a pointed bit to get it exactly on the edge of the corner. Uh, first time I did this I used a quarter inch bit and I lined up the outer edge of the quarter inch and the whole thing was off about an eighth of an inch. So don't do that. Uh, line it up right, if you're using only a quarter inch, line it up right on the middle. Uh, here I'm using the paper method to find the uh, zero axis or the surface of the wood. Uh, I used the middle of the board because I was hoping it would be most level there. And as it turns out, it wasn't quite most level. Uh, here I'm taking off the pointed bit, or rather the uh, pointed bit, and putting on a my V-carve, which is the first... Thing that's going to be carved on this and it carved the because of the way I laid it out it carved the uh, fern first now it's got a quarter inch bit on there and it's carved it, cutting the edge but you'll notice it skipped a section there in the middle that's because that was a low spot on the board again I should have leveled this thing before I did it but I've learned through experience that if you do a deep enough uh, border, even if you're off a little bit, it's going to catch it on the second or third pass. I did a 5 16th depth rather than a quarter inch depth. Uh, so there you see it did catch it. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps me, and I would appreciate it. Thank you. And it doesn't cost you anything. Anyway, it finished cut, cutting the quarter inch uh, border and here I'm changing it with the uh, uh, special wrench for the socket uh, which I'll have uh, in the description below if you'd like to order one. This is so much easier to change bits with uh, than using a plain old wrench. Gives you a little bit more different edges to catch a hold of and tighten it down and if you do this any length of time you end up using a lot of uh, changing bits. Here's the 60 degree uh, cutting the letters and it did an okay job. It uh, wasn't quite perfect but it was perfect enough uh, again because it wasn't perfectly level. Uh, but it'll cut them all up right to the edge of the line. And I've already cut that little hole, which is my lineup hole. And we're going to be looking at that right now. So it's done cutting tile one, which is your first tile. So I'm loosening up all my clamps. going to slide it forward and change bits again to the quarter inch bit because that's a quarter inch hole and I'm going to want to line up that hole exactly on the hole 
that was cut in tile one. This is now tile two. Good to have a stand like that in your shop to be able to support stuff like this. But here I'm jogging my machine over. I'm going to take the quarter inch and very slowly lower it. Do not get crazy and push it too hard because you're going to end up throwing your whole thing out of whack and you're going to have to reinitialize everything. But put your quarter inch in the bit, get it gently into that hole, and once you know you have it perfectly in the hole, go ahead and drive it all the way down. Then you know you're at the exact uh, axis that you need to be at to run the uh, tile program. So clamp it in tight, make sure you're lined up, take your time, lower it, get it in spot. Here I am tightening everything up, double checking everything. The first thing you're going to want to do when you do it is line your program, have your program set up so it cuts your outer uh, border first with a quarter inch bit because you already have the quarter inch in there. So when you start your program, it's going to go over and using the bit setter, it'll reset your height based upon the axis you set in the beginning. Here I lowered the uh, shroud so it would catch more of the dust. Now here it's cutting the outer edge and right away I notice I'm off about a sixteenth of an inch. So that means all the lettering is going to be off a sixteenth of an inch if I keep going. So I wanted to make sure exactly how much it was off, and it was a sixteenth. So I went ahead and stopped the machine, because it had only been running about a minute, and reset everything so it was over a sixteenth of an inch. Completed it, and it was perfect. So I've got the 60 degree bit back in there, and it's cutting the rest of the letters, and here I'm all done. So there's a couple more steps you have to take, and that's painting the white and the uh, gold around the edge, which are the color scheme that I use, and getting it all ready for uh, a clear coat of finish on top, and then you're done. Uh, obviously, after you paint it, you peel off the aura mask and clean up any loose you know, edges where it didn't quite stick right. But here's the finished project. I charged $450 for this, and if you didn't subscribe, please do it. It really helps. Anyway, thank you very much.